everybody, Maction here, and I am joined today by James Petruzzi, who has kindly agreed to uh, be a part of this interview. Um, sadly, I didn't quite have the money to head out to the East Coast. He uh, runs cat. He runs Discord Games. Um, their current game in development is called Chasm. James, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, I would love to hear a little bit about the background of, uh, of Discord games. Like, uh, how did it start? Um, <laughs> very humbly, I guess. Uh, after my partner Tim and I had gotten out of school and into the real world, it was like full-time jobs and all that, uh, kind of got it in my head for some reason to, to make a game. I don't really remember uh, what ri originally inspired me, like... I had a Mac at the time, and I remember seeing like the software coming out called uh, Torque 2D, and that you could like make games with it and all that. And like, you know, it was before the whole indie game boom, and I just thought it was like the coolest idea ever. And I had remembered Tim making games in high school uh, with Visual Basic. Like this is back in like 2000, maybe 2001. And um, so I downloaded the software, kind of got into it, and uh, got stuck in a couple places. And I was like, I should, I should hit Tim up. Like, you know, he. He really knew all this stuff, and we were good friends from high school and hadn't talked for years. So um, we kind of got back in contact and just started playing around with stuff and made a couple little demos and, and all that, and uh, just kind of escalated from there. You know, like we we tried a bunch of different game designs. Basically, everything we tried failed over and over for probably about two years, and then um, we finally stumbled upon uh, what would become Take Arms. I think we called it a 2D multiplayer shooter, something like that. Um, the original intention was something kind of like Contra, but in like uh, sort of a uh, Call of Duty deathmatch, you know, uh, situation. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of mistakes with it. Let's just say that. <laughs> I think it had a lot of good points to it, but it just didn't, you know, succeed like we expected it to. Um, I think it was still it did amazing for Xbox Live indie games. It's just it wasn't it wasn't the golden ticket to to indie land, you know, that we were expecting it to be. So. That just like completely, pretty much killed the company. So actually after that, um, what got me back into it was kind of just cleaning up my hard drive and I ran into the source code for 48 chambers, well, 36 chambers, which was, uh, well, this will kind of give people some perspective on <laughs> how ridiculous all this was. So like, like I told you, we tried to make like probably 20 games and every single one of them failed. And, uh, Finally, at some point, like we were about to throw in the towel, and I was like, "All right, you know what? I'm gonna." Because we just had like the worst designs ever. And then finally, like I saw this game called uh, the World's Hardest Game or something like that. It's like a little square with these like really hard levels, and I was like, "Man, this is like more fun than anything we've made." So, if I can't like make a good game like just based off of this and like adapt it to the thumbstick on the 360, um, then I should probably just throw in the towel. So the the Dream Build Play competition was coming up, which is like Microsoft's kind of indie sponsored competition. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make this game, 36 levels, finish it and submit it. And then uh, if I actually manage to finish it, I'll make another game. Otherwise, this is just ridiculous, right? So I managed to finish it, I submitted it to Dream Build Play. Um, and I went to go put it onto the store and like it failed for a variety of reasons that's on their checklist. And then like, Tim just like kind of jumped back into things and we started talking about what would become Take Arms and like I just never released it. So that's kind of like what somehow like convinced me to like start messing with things again. And then um, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna add some more levels, polish it up, release it, see how it does. And it just like kind of got me like back into the swing of things. Kind of reminded me, you know, like why, why I was doing all that in the first place. And it wasn't to become some indie superstar or some bullshit. It was just that I like really enjoyed doing it. and. It was kind of the gateway, I guess, back into it, you know. So I spent probably like uh, three to four weeks uh, polishing it up and improving things and adding levels and then released that and then started thinking about what I wanted to do, like the next big project. That's kind of where Chasm came from after that. Chasm had a uh, successful Kickstarter. Was there ever any concern that, um, that Chasm would not get off the ground when it was in the uh, when it was in the Kickstarter stage. Yeah, yeah, I kind of expected it to fail to begin with. Um, <clears throat> like that, that thing I told you to take arms, like where like all our hopes were dashed, like that taught me a very important life lesson, like not to expect things to work out, like don't expect the best ever. Um, so yeah, I just kind of 
launched it. I thought it was crazy. Like, I didn't think we were going to raise that much money, to be honest. Like, I knew that's how much money we needed if we were going to make it. And I didn't know if people would get it or not. Um, but we really didn't have any other choice in my mind. Like, I had gone to GDC with, like, a demo of the game, like, just before that, the month before. And uh, we did, like, this, it's called GDC Play. There's, like, basically all these kiosks set up and you can put your game on it and then the idea was like all these business executives walk around and look at stuff and they're like oh that looks awesome let's fund that kind of thing it, it it was a really interesting situation where like a lot of people were coming up and telling us it looked awesome you know like people from capcom sega like all these big companies and like we were just kind of like mind blown you know that all these people were paying attention to us and liked it after the event and I started contacting them and stuff, like it became apparent, you know, like we weren't gonna be able to make the game how we wanted and get it funded. Um, like we did have some offers on the table, but a lot of them were kind of like the, okay, you're gonna have to change this and this and this and this, like just the most cliche stuff you could possibly expect to hear from publishers. It is all real, <laughs> I can't confirm that. So, so the Kickstarter thing was just kind of like this, okay, if we actually have to take like uh, a horrible blow and change the game and, and do whatever to get it made, then I guess we'll do that. But let's try this first. You know, worst case, if it fails, um, we can always, you know, go grovel at the feet of one of these publishers just to get something made. Discord Games has followed a really interesting path. You started live streaming the development process through a, uh, um, uh, through a undisclosed not here disclosed uh, Twitch account. Yeah. Um, and uh, whose idea was it to do that? <laughs> Yours. Yeah, I think it was mine. Brilliant I, idea. I had seen something about like development live streams before. Well, and originally, like, my original idea wasn't what came into fruition either. Like, from the beginning, I wanted to get um, the community kind of involved. And I think it's also like a good way to show, like, hey, we're working on this like all the time and you can see how tedious it is anytime you want <laughs> well james thank you so much for joining me it's been fantastic i've appreciated it and uh if you are at all interested in taking a look at discord games and their library of games you can go to their website i'll have links in the description below additionally um if you want to pre-order chasm which i think you should um, you can also do so from their website. One of the perks of pre-ordering at a certain level is access to that uh, live stream, to that live stream account so that you can watch Chasm as it's being made. Not all of, of course, like James said, you've got to keep some of the mystery intact.